This video will show you how to use Business Vision Intelligent in Sage Business Vision 2013 or higher. Business Intelligent module is a new feature that allows you to easily analyze performance data, identify trends, and find answers needed for order entry, sales order histories, purchase order, and purchase order history module. I'm going to use the ABC Electronic Company to demonstrate how to use the Business Intelligent feature. There are two ways to open the feature. On the toolbar, you see the icon for Business Intelligent. You can click on that icon to open the module. The second way is you go to the Utilities and you go to Business Intelligent. Once you open, you will see four modules, Sales Analysis, Orders, Purchase Analysis, and Purchase Orders. On the right side, you will see three sections. The top section is the Selection Criteria, where you can select the day range, and you can select some of the criteria here. The second sections are all of the available fields for the module. When you move to different modules, you will have a different set of fields. Okay. And the third section is where you retrieve the data. I will show you several examples so you can see how the program works. First example, I want to see the total sale for each customer in 2011. I'll select the date from January 1st until now. And below here, I'll select the invoice year because I want to see the invoice for the year. And this is the total because we want to see the total. And the customer will be the column. So once we finish specifying the criteria, you click on refresh. And here it will show you the total for each customer in the year 2011. Next to the customer number, you will see a little triangle. If you click on the triangle, the customer list will be shorted from A to Z or the opposite, Z to A. You will also see the little filter symbol here. If you click on this one, you can deselect some customer that you don't want to be on the list. For example, I uncheck some of them and I click OK and you can see that those customers will be removed from the list. If you want them to be back, you select Show All. If you right-click on 2011, you have the option to sort this, the customer number by this column. So if I click on that, you will see it will be sorted by lowest to highest. If you want to remove the sorting, Right click again and you go to remove all sorting and it will go back to what it was before. In front of invoice year, you see the plus sign. That means we can expand it. So click on the plus sign, it will expand to invoice month. So below that you see 2011 and it will split to January, February until June. And it has a total at the end. If you expand the invoice month, you have invoice day. So under January, it will give you the invoice for each day. If you want to close that, you click on the minus sign. It will go back. You can even get more detail on the data by double click on the white cell. For example, I want to see the invoices for Acme in 2011. I just double click on this sales and it will open and show me all of the invoices for ACME in 2011. You can group the invoices by a column. For example, I want to group these invoices by territory code. I hold the territory and drag it to the corner and you can see that it will group by territory code and under territory code FS1 
If I open this, it will show me there are two invoices with this territory code. And I have two invoices with HSE. And I have two invoices with W81. If I don't want to group by territory code, I just bring the field down and put it back. So it will go back to the home list. Example number two. I want to see the total sales subtotal sales tax number one and sales tax number two for each customer in the year 2011. To add a field or to remove a field, you can just simply drag the field to the top part or bring it down to the data area. I want to have the total, subtotal, so I drag the subtotal, the tax one, and tax two. I change the date to January 1st, 2011, and click the refresh icon, and the data will appear on the screen. If you want to change the order of the columns, for example, if you move the total to the last column, then you click the total, move it to the last column. If you want to save the layout of your query so that you can reuse next time, click the Save button and give it a name. Next time, when you go back to the module, you open this and you will have the query ready for you to use. So just change the date and refresh it. Example number three, I want to see the top 10 customers who have the highest sales in the year 2011. First of all, we need to retrieve the sales for the year 2011 for all the customers. So I change the date. And then I select the invoice year for the customer and I want to see the total. Refresh it. After that, we're going to sort the columns so that the customer who have the highest will be on the top. So I right click sort customer by this column. And in this case, it's sort from lowest to highest. So to reverse this order, I click on the triangle of the customer. So it, the list will be going from the highest to the lowest. Then I want to show 10 customers, so I click the check mark for show top 10. It will show me the 10 customer who has the highest sales if I want to see the other customer, you put a check mark in this one. So this is the rest of the customer would give you the total for the 2011. Example number four, I want to see the sales for the customers by provinces in the year 2011. When talking about the province, we're talking about the address. So you need to select the option to include address. When you select that option, you will see several more fields. City, province, country, postal code. So in the query, we want to see the sales by customer. So you need to select customer. Select the total for the sales and for the year. Okay. And we want by provinces. So when you drag the province, you will have two locations, either before or after the customer number. Let's try to see what happens if you leave it after the customer number. Then you select the date and refresh it. And you can see the customer number will be on the left and the province on the right. It will tell you. But if you do this, it won't tell you what is the total for all of the customer in the province in Ontario. If you want to change the order, just move the call the header for province in front of customer and this way it will group by Alberta, BC, 
Manitoba, and so on. So you can see each province I have this many customer, and at the end of province, you will see the total for the province. Example number five. I want to see the quantity shift for each park number in each product code in the year 2011. When we talk about quantity, we're talking about the details of the invoice. So you select the option to include the details. Once you do that, you will see some other field available. For example, order quantity, committed quantity, back order quantities, and etc. So I want to see the shift quantity. I'm going to select the committed quantity. And we don't want to know about customer number, so I'm going to remove the customer number. And we want to know the park number. And we want to know about the product code, so I select the product code. And the year. Then we select the date for the year 2011. Refresh it. So here you will see this item we saw three in the year 2011 and for the product code COM we saw two items CD204 and CD800 and these are the quantity shift. Below each group you will see the total for the group. Example number six you try to compare the total sales for the provinces in the year 2010 and 2011. First, we're going to need to retrieve the data. I want to get the sales by the province. So first of all, we have to select the address so that we can get the province. And now you select province. Drag it here. And we don't need the customer number, so we can put the customer back. We want the total sale by year, so select invoice year. And the date from January 1st, 2010. And then refresh. So this is the data for 2010 and 2011. Next, you're going to select the data that you want to have on the chart. So I'm going to highlight 2010 to 2011 and then I click on the chart wizard icon on the top we have different types of chart for this example I'm going to select the bar type and click next you can see the blue bar is for 2010 and the red bar for 2011 if you click next you have option to customize your chart for example you can change the background you can change the field star and some other thing. Once you finish, you click the finish icon. On the right side, you see the bar and a little dot here. The chart is hidden. To see the chart, you double click on the dot and it's open the chart. And you can resize the chart to make it bigger or make it smaller. If you don't want to see the chart, you can double click on the dot again and the chart will be hidden again. You can export the data to PDF format, XLS, XLSX, or the CSV format. For the chart, you can export to the PDF. I'm going to show you how. To export the data, you click on the arrow next to the export icon, and you have different options. Let's select the export to PDF, and then you give it a name. And it will save the file. And I have the data PDF. And this is my um, export data. To export the chart, you make sure that the chart is finished. And then you click on the arrow, select export chart to PDF. And then save it. And my chart is saved as PDF format.
This is the end of the video on how to use business intelligence feature. If you have any questions, please call our customer support department at 800-215-5395. Thank you.